Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 here, I'd like to look at verses number 16 and 17. I'd like to focus on this this morning. The Bible reads, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. This admonition, the Lord speaking through the Holy Spirit here, He's trying to tell you that God wants His people to be separate and clean and distinct and not look like the rest of the world. You ought to uh, let your faith be visible. It ought to be known by what you do and say and how you live, what type of a person you are. I had somebody ask me years ago, they said, uh, about this time of year, they said, uh, what are you going as this year? Who's ever had somebody ask them a question like that? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yes. Yes. What are you going as this year? I was young when I first remember that. It was very distinct. And I remember, uh, and I mean very young, and um, a, a young lady talking about being strawberry shortcake and th that kind of thing, like uh, some cartoon character or whatever. And, and I remember that conversation, and, and uh, honestly, at that time in my youth, I didn't have an answer. I was a little befuddled. I thought, well, I, you do that? Well, we don't do that. You know, that was kind of my response. I, I didn't really know how to answer. Here's another question for you, one that I re get often. Is it a sin for a Christian to celebrate Halloween? Who's heard that? I want to tell you, as a Christian, when he says here to be ye separate, when he says that we are the temple of the living God, I believe, and I'm going to say it flat out, it is a sin for a Christian to participate in Halloween. It has to be said. These days, people want to, they want to go back and forth and wiggle around, and you can't really pin them down on anything, and I just want to say it very simply. As a Bible-believing Christian, if you're a good Christian, it ought to be that you're not found with the world in this night of evil and wickedness participating in their sins. Let me tell you about Anton LaVey. Who knows who he is? Anton LaVey was the founder of the Satanic Church and he wrote the Satanic Bible. Okay? He declared that by dressing up, either by wearing a costume or collaring oneself in celebration of Halloween, it signifies that you allow spirits to own you and influence you. You're letting Satan in is what he's talking about. He further said that when you adopt this pagan practice, you subconsciously open and expose yourself to demonic activity. You're allowing yourself to be exposed to it. He has a very famous quote considering Halloween, and here's what he said. I am glad that Christian parents allow their children to worship the devil at least one night out of the year. Welcome to Halloween. Now this guy is known for all manner of disgusting perversion and wicked statements about hurting the innocent. His Bible, so-called, is blasphemous. And his famous quote is, Thank you, Christian parents, for letting your children worship the devil on Halloween. If you're a Christian parent, if you're a Christian, period, you should not participate in Halloween. Another former Satanist, John Ramirez, who said that when you dress up, even as an angel or a mermaid for Halloween, here's his quote, you give the devil legal rights to change your identity. Now, the Native American Indians... They were known for putting on a disguise, putting on a costume, dressing up as one of the spirits, and letting the spirit of the bull, and they would go around and tell stories, the spirit of the wolf, and they would open themselves to demonic influence and devil possession that would take over their body, and they would play out the role 
of a wild animal or of an evil spirit. But today, because it's just another Hallmark holiday, oh, you superstitious Christians, come on, what's the big deal? It's just some candy and costumes. It's just fun for the kids. I disagree. Let me, let me, I, I just want to, if you would, 2 Corinthians 6, look at this. Look in your Bible, this is important. If you underline in your Bible, do this. If you, if you don't write this down, I, wanted, I want to show you what's in here. This is important. He says in verse 14, Be not unequally yoked together. Do you know what yoked together means? Tied together. Great. That's excellent. They would put two bulls, or here's a bull and a heifer. Sorry, Brother Luke. They're yoked together in marriage, right? Amen. They're, they're together. They've sworn, hey, we're in this together. They're a team. They're one unit in God's eyes, right? Yoked. He says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. These are people that don't believe in God. For what fellowship? Here's the other word. So we've got yoked together. Now underline fellowship. He says, what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? You can underline communion. So we've got yoked together. We've got fellowship. We've got communion. To commune with someone is to speak and relate and talk and get close, right? He says in verse 15, and what concord, this is yet another synonym for becoming a partner, being yoked together. He says, what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part, there's partner, hath he with, that believeth with an infidel, and what agreement, there's another word, an agreement, hath the temple of God with idols, for ye are the temple of the living God. The Holy Spirit dwells in you by faith. He lives inside of you, and wherever you go, whatever you do, whatever you look at, you're dragging God along and making Him put up with your sin. Now, thank God we're forgiven of our sin, but it gives us the Holy Spirit so we can cease from sin and live like Him and look like the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, what agreement? Well, so what ought we to do? Well, look at verse 17. He says... Come out. That's a good one. That means to be separate. Come out from among them and be ye separate. There's another one. Leave where you're at. Get separated and distinct, saith the Lord, and touch not. Touch not the unclean thing. You know, the sin with Eve started when she touched it. Right? She looked and lusted, but then really when she touched it, then she committed God is telling us as Bible-believing Christians to come out, to be separate, to touch not. Don't have an association. Don't be grouped up. Don't be lumped up. When one of your friends say, hey, what are you going as this year? I don't know, maybe a Bible-believing Christian. Amen. <laughs> you know? What are you going as this year? I'm going as John the Baptist. <laughs> right? I'm going to the chili cook-off. And we're going to sing hymns and eat good food. Amen. Yeah. Come out. Touch not. You know, the problem is when you touch something, you're dirty. We're working. I mean, there was a lot of work going on out here yesterday. I'm working out there trying to water those things. And I, got, I had this hose and I took it all the way into the ground trying to get that water to the root. And I bring up my hand and it's dirty. I touch the dirt. You know what that made my hand? Dirty. So when you touch an unclean thing, what does that make you? Unclean. Unclean. Does God want you to be clean? Amen. Of course He does. He wants you to be clean. Now look, let's look at this again. Go back to verse 14. Go to the top. Be not ye unequally yoked together with whom? Look at this. Unbelievers. Don't be yoked up with an unbeliever. Luke married Minna because she's saved. Amen. That was his like first requirement. She's got to be saved, and i got to like her. And he had a whole list. And boy, thank God she met them all, right? I'm sure her list was bigger. No, I'm just kidding. I'll leave them alone. All right. All right. But we don't go into business with somebody that's not saved. We don't marry somebody that's not saved, okay? He says, unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with, and you can underline this one, unrighteousness. You can't both do right and do wrong at the same time. 
You can't be filled with the Spirit and walking in the flesh at the same time. As a Christian, he says, uh, don't be around the unbelievers. Don't be unrighteous. What else does he say? And what communion hath light with darkness. You know what Halloween is? It's a day of darkness. It's hell's holy day, if you will. They celebrate it as if it were Satan's birthday. That's what the occult does. Now, Christianity, we just get together and say, oh, we're just having some fun. We're going to pre pretend to be a cartoon character, and we're going to eat some genetically modified corn syrup candy, and, you know, we're going to, we're going to support all the big candy companies, you know? He says in verse 15, What concord hath Christ with Belial? So don't group up with unbelievers, with unrighteous, with darkness. And then he says, Belial. That's Baal. That's the devil. That's Satan. Belial. You have no business serving the devil. You have no business looking like somebody that serves the devil. Hey, while we're at it, if you have an ACDC t-shirt and they sing about hell and the devil, and you say, well, I'm a Christian, but I'm under grace. So it's all grace, bro. And I'll wear my satanic t-shirt out because are you really representing the Lord when you do that? No. You're not. You look filthy. You look wicked. You look like the world. And here's the problem. We're all in the flesh. We all just want some attention. We want to be accepted. And what do we do? We, dr we drop our standards, we lower our standards to look like somebody else, and all they're doing is copycatting somebody else. Don't put yourself in the stranglehold of trying to impress people. Amen. Yeah. Unbelievers, unrighteous, darkness, Belial. He says, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Do you know what that word infidel means? Infidelity. There's a famous bank called Fidelity, and they have that wicked all-seeing eye, that's Lucifer's eye as their logo, right? Because most bankers go that way, but what does it mean? Well, either you're, there's fidelity in your marriage and you're faithful, or there is no faithfulness. So he says, you're either a believer of God or you're unfaithful to God. You're an infidel. That's what that word means. You, you just reject faith in God. He says, what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Did you know when you put on a costume... You're putting on an idol. He says, God lives in you, and you dress up like a satanic idol, and you let that spirit control you and affect you and manipulate you. I know this is a hard saying, and I say it out of love and compassion. If you have anything to do with Halloween, let this, let this be the end of it. Honor God. Honor the Lord. Don't give in to idols and the devil and darkness and wickedness. Come out from among them. Be ye separate. Don't touch the unclean thing. It will affect you. I have a couple basic points this morning. My first point is that Halloween is witchcraft. That's my first point. I've just got a couple of very simple points. This is a very profound sermon. The application, Lord willing, is simple. And now think about it. What other time of the year do you see people out in public honoring witches and devils and skeletons and ghosts and mummies and zombies and harlots and cross-dressers in public? Only this time of year do they worship death. Of course, I think Brother Julian's telling me, no, it's getting more and more like that. <laughs> What's that? The Pride, the Pride Parade. Well, that's true, too. Yeah, I think they have one this month anyway. If you would, go to 1 Corinthians 10. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Halloween is witchcraft. It's honoring satanic, occult, demonic activity and it's dangerous. Now, I tell you, you may say, oh, come on, what's the big deal? We're just dressing up and having a little bit of fun. Well, I'll tell you what the big deal is. In Proverbs 14, verse 9, he says, fools make a mock at sin. Right. Don't mock sin and pretend to be sinning and joke around about it. Listen, if you're a Christian, and while we're talking about the pride parades, don't talk with a lisp and pretend to be one of them. You ought to avoid that sort of thing. Exodus 22, verse 18, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. That's right. 
In the Old Testament, God said, put them to death, don't let them live. Why? Because they're working for Satan. They are permanently possessed with a devil, and that's how they're able to do what they do. Are you, say, are you saying magic's real? I am saying magic's real. But I'm here to tell you that miracles are more powerful. Now, God's power is greater than the devil's power. Right. And the magic, we see it in many places in the Bible, where the sons of Satan were able to perform seemingly some sort of a miracle. We saw it with in Egypt. They came to Pharaoh's soothsayers and magicians. And, you know, Moses puts down his, state, you know, his stick. It turns into a serpent. Well, so did they. They said, yeah, I know that trick. Only God's stick ate that serpent. Every time he was able to one-up them because they're just pretenders and fake, they have a false and lying spirit, a deceiving spirit. We saw it this morning if you were in Sunday school in 1 Timothy 4. He says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Don't give heed to the seduction of witchcraft it, oh, it looks neat and mysterious. You know, you know the problem we have? What's he, there's a song we sing, Only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth. Uh, if you read your daily proverb today, you would have discovered that in Proverbs chapter 1, he tells us that the beginning of knowledge, it's the fear of the Lord. You want to be a wise man? You better figure out fear God first, and you walk in that fear of the Lord. He'll make you smarter. He'll bless you. He'll take care of you. He'll give. I mean, he'll, he'll answer those prayers when you're truly afraid of God, and He sees the heart. Well, we thought we're supposed to love Him. We do, because He first loved us, and yet we walk in His fear, because I don't want His judgment on my life. God has the power to crush me. God could cause me to fall over right here dead. You know He could do that. I'm afraid of Him. Well, I don't want to go to the movie theater and watch some scary movie and get afraid of that. That's misplaced fear. I'm called to only fear the Lord. I'm not called to fear the darkness. No, no, no. I've not been given the spirit of fear. No, what's he say? But of power and of love and of the sound mind. We ought to have a clear, sober mind, and Halloween takes that away from you. You're in 1 Corinthians 10. Look at verse number 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. He's saying, look, there's a clear line. It's black and white. And you can't go down to a Halloween party and pretend to be a Bible-believing Christian. They don't want you there. They don't want to hear the gospel. They want to get drunk and party. God says, come out from among them. Be separate. Touch not the unclean thing, and I'll receive you. We have a problem with Christianity today where they, they're too worried about looking just like the world. Just like the world. Go to 2 Chronicles 13. That's in the Old Testament. 2 Chronicles chapter 13, what he said, he said, And what concord hath Christ with Belial? How can Satan and God work together? They're in opposition. Satan means adversary. He's your enemy. He's opposed to you and to all that's good. When you partner with devils, when you partake in Halloween, you get hurt spiritually. It does affect you. My second point is that Halloween is spiritual grooming. It's spiritual grooming. You say, what is grooming? Dictionary definition. The practice of preparing or training someone for a particular purpose or activity. It's putting something in their eyes and in their mind that they would not otherwise know about, and you put it out there and you show it to them and you seduce them. You're grooming them to walk in darkness. Let me give you a darker definition of grooming. What does grooming a person mean? Google result. Grooming is when someone builds a relationship, trust, an emotional connection, with a child or young person so they can manipulate, exploit, 
and abuse them. Children and young people who are groomed can be uh, abused, exploited, and trafficked. You, you understand what he's talking about? Yes. This is somebody that would put things in the eyes of a child with the intent of hurting them. And here's my statement. Halloween is spiritual grooming. It's just a little fun. You're going to tell your children in church the devil's bad. And then you're going to take them out and let their friends dress up like devils. Let them laugh at ghosts and ghouls and the undead and do all manner of wickedness and perversion. It's kind of like the Santa Claus thing. You know why I'm so opposed to Santa Claus? Because it's like an antichrist. Yep. Right? As long as you're good, you get the gift. Wait a minute, I thought a gift was free. Because Jesus does see everything. He knows everything. He rewards your work. But we're not saved by work. We're saved by faith. Uh, Santa Claus is the lie. And I know December 25th, there's controversy in that date. We're not talking about that. Wait until Christmas time. We'll talk about that. All right? And I'm not telling you if you participate in Christmas that you're evil either. But I, I, want, I just want you to focus on this. When you put these wicked images in the eyes of your children, ghosts and devils and witches and warlocks, there are people out there that really do that sort of thing. And you know what they want? They want to abuse your children. And when you tell your children, no, no, it's okay, it's all right, don't get upset, don't be afraid, it's just fun and games. When you lose them 10 or 20 years later to the occult, I don't understand. They went to college and they came back a homosexual and a Wiccan. What is that? They worship nature. What happened? Well, you've been grooming them all along every year at Halloween time. You've been preparing them spiritually to be abused and molested spiritually. That's what it does. This is very important. You're in 2 Chronicles. 13, look at verse number 7. 2 Chronicles 13, verse number 7. And there are gathered unto him vain men. Right? So they have their own selfish purpose. Vain men. The children of Belial. Aha! There it is. Remember what concord hath Christ with Belial? Here it is. Children of Belial, they're children of the devil, and have strengthened themselves against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, when Rehoboam was young and tender-hearted and could not withstand them. This is grooming. Evil people that work for the devil came into a young man and started spewing perversion and drawing him away in the wrong way. Oh, it's okay to worship a little bit of devils. We do it just fine and God hasn't struck me dead. You can come and play Halloween. There's nothing wrong with it. You see what they're doing? Tender-hearted. David, there's the blessing that he was tender-hearted toward God all of his life. Don't become hard-hearted. Your children are tender. They're soft. They're pliable. They're tender-hearted. And the things you let in their eyes, it goes into their heart and it changes who they are. Don't show them devils. Don't let them sit at the table of devils. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of devils. Halloween is spiritual grooming. Go to Matthew 18. Go to Matthew chapter 18. There in the Old Testament, that word that is used for Belial, that name for Satan, it's used in Psalm 101. In Psalm 101, he says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Instead of using the word Belial there, Satan, the devil, they use the word wicked thing. Same meaning. I will set no satanic thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. He said, come out from among them. These are those, remember, doctrines of devils, where they've left Christianity to go to something else. They've turned aside from God. They've rejected God. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. You understand, as a Christian, there are certain things that God wants you to hate. He didn't say, I hate the people. These are God's enemies. And he said, I hate their work. Well, what is their work? 
perversion, wickedness, witchcraft, idolatry, seances, soothsaying, costumes. It all flows. You're in Matthew 18. You guys remember that? What's it? Be careful, little lies, what you see. I had somebody recently, I was trying to help consult them and give them spiritual advice in their broken state with their marriage. And we'll talk about the marriage tonight. He said, when I was a child, one of the first memories I have is when a neighbor was watching. My mom let a neighbor kid babysit us and they put perverted things on the TV screen. It's one of my first memories as a child. And here we are 40 years later and the guy has a problem. Be careful little eyes what you see. Halloween is spiritual grooming. And I'm here to warn you, if you tell your children it's okay to go out and do that, it's going to affect them for the rest of their life. This is not a small issue. You remember Dinah? Remember Jacob, uh, he, had, he had 12 sons, Dinah, she goes out to see the daughters of the land, it says. Who remembers the story? And what happened? She, it literally says, she goes out to see the daughters of the land. Well, what are they doing? And what are they dressing like? And what kind of music are they singing and dancing to? And what kind of boys are they hanging out with? And you know what happened? She was defiled. It ruined her life. The rest of her life was broken. She was defiled because she went out to see what everybody else was dressing like, what they were doing. She was abused and defiled. You're in Matthew 18. This is important. If you would, look at verse number 5. Matthew 18, verse 5. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. This is the Lord Jesus Christ talking about child abusers, child offenders, and He says when you offend a child, it's better off that you were hanged and drowned rather than be allowed to live. You know in the Old Testament this happened if somebody forced someone or abused someone or even a marital abuse and adultery, that there was a death penalty for that. For sodomy and bestiality, there was a death penalty. They took them out, they threw rocks at their head until they died, and the person never abused another one again. It never happened again. Jeffrey Dahmer. I'm not going to get into the details. He was a cannibal and a homosexual, and a child abuser, and if he got caught and judged after the first one, then he wouldn't have been able to do it over and over and over again. And you know what? Jeffrey Dahmer loved Halloween. Imagine that. Brother Harry, and you know, Brother Harry told me, I preached about Halloween well, six years ago. Yeah. And he came up and he says, you know, where I work, we have to go out and check on parolees. And every year at Halloween time, that's when all the homos are out trying to get children. And there's a special law. They have to put it up on their door. they got to turn the lights out. No candy here. Don't come in. We're known for hurting children. Go away. That's probably the biggest torture to them. I mean, they're still allowed to be at home. They're not locked up for hurting children. And they certainly, as Jesus said, they weren't hanged about His neck and drowned into the depth of the sea. Jesus takes offending little ones pretty seriously, doesn't He? Amen. Look at verse 7. Woe unto the world because of offenses. He says, when you offend these children, woe unto you, woe unto you. There's a judgment coming. For it must needs be that offenses come, but woe unto that man by whom the offense cometh. He says, if you're one of them, you better look out, buddy. God has a special wrath for you. There's judgment coming. Look at verse 10. Matthew 18, verse 10, Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. This is a special promise from God. Uh, God does not split the sky open and step down and intervene in every situation. He's given us all free will. 
I freely chose to come to church today, and I freely chose not to hit you in the face when I saw you. Like, praise the Lord, you know, right? I mean, you have free will, right? But he says here that when it comes to children especially, he says that there's an angel that stands before the face of God. There's a messenger as an eyewitness against you. And how you handle that child, what you do to that child, there's a special record kept in heaven. And those that end up in hell, they have a, they have a hotter hell, a greater damnation. For hurting those children. And here we are at Halloween season when every commercial and every, I mean, the gas station billboard, everywhere you go, every store you go into, ah, it's okay. Your kid wants some candy. We don't eat that junk. I don't want it. We're not interested. I don't want to partake. I want to come out from among them. I want to be ye separate. I don't want to touch the unclean thing. What part have I with Belial or an infidel or darkness and wickedness? No, 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 no. I want to be clean and separate. What are you going as this year? A Christian. Amen. I ain't going out. Yes. Not interested. Not involved. Amen. Go to 2 Kings chapter 9, please. 2 Kings chapter 9. If you're a Christian, you ought to have the same attitude. Hate that work. Hate that darkness. Hate what Satan's doing to our children, exposing them, perverting their eyes. Halloween is witchcraft, point number one. Halloween is spiritual grooming, point number two. Point number three, Halloween is idolatry. That's worshiping a false god. Halloween is idolatry. We saw it in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 16. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. There is no temple that God dwells in today. He dwells in your heart. If they build a temple in the Middle East, that's an abomination for the Antichrist. God is inside of you. You are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit is inside of you. And if God is inside of you, why would you take Him down to the bar or some Halloween party or anything else that would defile? Or honor Satan. Yeah. Halloween is idolatry. You know, the first two commandments. Exodus 20, verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The next verse, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. He goes on, Don't make an image, an effigy, a costume of anything. Especially don't put it on and pretend like it and let that spirit control you. You're acquiescing. You're submitting to spiritual power. You're losing your own power when you do that. Halloween is idolatry. It was point number three. Point number four. Halloween, Halloween witchcraft is full of whoredoms. Whoredoms. That's a Bible word. A few years ago when we moved here to start the church, there was a young couple that lived across from us, and we seemed to get along just fine. Their cat would come over, and the girls would pet it, and we would talk to them, and I was trying to minister to them. And about this time of year, when Halloween happened, they were apparently getting ready to go out for Halloween night. And of course, he's dressed up like a cartoon character. She comes walking out like a bleeding, dead harlot in the most inappropriate attire, with artificial blood gushing out of her body, her legs. Naomi may not remember, I, I hope she doesn't, but it, it, she was like, dead, she's bleeding. Like she was worried as a child, like why is, that, why is that woman, what's wrong? That's not right, that's not normal, that's not good. I mean, a child is sensitive and tender-hearted. And you say, we're not, no, 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 we're not going to do the bad stuff. Hey, well, I'm going to dress them like David and Goliath, and we're, we're going to be good, godly characters for Halloween, and we're going to send them out to look at whoredoms? Mm -hmm. How is that Christ honoring? 2 Kings 9, if you would, actually, let me read this first. In Nah Nahum 3, it says, because of the multitude of the whoredoms, of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts, that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. That's speaking of the city Nineveh when it received its judgment, and it made the point how it seduced another nation was with harlots. They sent out whoredoms and witchcraft to serve other gods. There are many examples of this in the Bible. There were so many, I really, I, I had to like throw 10 out and just say, let me just give you one good example. And then let's look at Jezebel, 
the most famous witch and whore in the Bible. 2 Kings 9, look at verse 22. What does she do? Verse 22, And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace, so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many? She made Ahab sin greatly. She killed prophets of the Lord. She reared up idols unto Baal. They were casting children into the fire unto Moloch, all because of this witch that was a whore. That's how she operated her kingdom. Queen whore. Queen witchcraft. Look at verse 30. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, so he gets up there to fight. Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face and tired her head, and looked out through a window. Do you know what he's talking about? She's a witch. She uses a harlot's disguise. In Proverbs, he tells us to look out for the woman with the attire of an harlot. She used her body and her appearance and makeup or paint. She puts on this costume, the attire of an harlot, to have spiritual power over men to get them to do what she wanted. Because you can't walk in the spirit and walk in the flesh. And she knew if she could get them to lust after her flesh, she could control their spirit. If you would go to 2 John chapter 1. Of course, the story goes on. He says, who's on the Lord's side? Throw her down. And there were some men that threw her down, and she got splatted. You know, Jezebel died. But she dressed up in a costume of a harlot. She painted her face. I want to tell you that Halloween is all about death and demonism. And hey, is death defeated? Amen. I'm sorry. Is death defeated? Amen. Amen. Who defeated death? Jesus, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's been defeated and we, it shouldn't be mocked or worshipped. He says in 1 Corinthians 15, 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not, we have nothing to fear in death. There's no discharge in that war. I have nothing to be afraid of. I mean, nobody wants to die and go through the pain of dying. I, I get that, but it will happen to all of us. I saw a statistic. They said 10 out of 10 people die. Did you know that? <laughs> Well, that means you're one of them. So your time is coming. The question is, are you right with the Lord? Have you trusted in Jesus? Do you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you still trying to trust in your own works? Or are you still running from Him, running with the world away from Christ? I want to ask this final question. Isn't Halloween time a good time to pass out tracts to the world. Is it? A few other pastors I know, we would disagree on this. They say, we open the doors and we give out candy. And I was just talking with somebody, I believe it was this previous week, about another church in town that's similar in faith and practice. And they started doing that. We'll do the trunk or treat. And they can come by and get stuff out of the trunk. And guess what happened? People that go to that church that show up to open up their trunk, they're dressing like devils and ghosts. You go to this church and you're going to come dressed like a devil. What's wrong with this? Is Halloween a good time to witness and give out tracts? Or are we just justifying the sin of witchcraft and the sin of grooming and participating by condoning it? You're in 2 John 1, if you would, please look at verse number 9. 2 John 1, verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine... Receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. You know what he's saying? Don't bless evil. Look at it again. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. 
You know what the Christian habit is sometimes? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy special tracks for them, and I'll give them candy. And when they come up, I'll say, oh, what's your costume? Ooh, that's gross. Well, here's some candy. God bless you. I hope you read that track. And the kids take all their candy home, and the parents, who are dressed like devils, also go home and say, oh, throw the track out. We'll get this candy, that candy. I'm keeping this one. And I think most of the time our, our purposes are frustrated, is a Bible phrase. It's disappointed. You mean well. But when it's the devil's holiday, I mean, what, you, might as well go, you might as well dress up like Jesus and go to the Halloween party and try to preach Jesus to him. You'll be received just as well. Eh, no, 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 not interested. It's the devil's night. We don't want it. Go back to 2 Corinthians 6, where we started, please. Oh, I was going to read verse 11. I'll read it to you now. Well, I'll read verse 10 and 11 as you're going there. If, there. if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed, for he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. If I ran into you in public and I said, hey, where are you going? Oh, we're going to get an abortion. Oh, God bless you. Have a great day. Uh, no, right? Run into you in public. Hey, where are you going? We're going down to the marijuana dispensary. We're going to get a pound of weed. Oh, God bless you. Have a great day. No, I'm not going to bless you and be partaker of your deeds. Where are you guys going? We're going to the bar. Well, I hope the Lord really blesses you while you're there. You would say, what's wrong with you? Have you lost your mind? But we do it on Halloween night. Why? Because the world, I mean, they've convinced us it's everywhere we go. It's on every TV show. It's on every corner. It's on the billboards. It's in every grocery store. You go down to, you go to a store, you go to Costco or Home Depot. Home Depot right now has these big old filthy monsters. You know, and it's like, I am not taking my child in there at this season. I'm going to keep them separate because I don't want my child to look at this and say, what is wrong with this? I'm scared. I don't know what to think of it because then I have to try to comfort them and say, it's not real. Don't be afraid. But at the same time, it's like they're representing a demon and it may look like that in hell one day. I don't know. And it's evil. It's wicked. Let's just, let's just stay separate. Why don't we just come out from among them? 2 Corinthians 6, again, look at verse 14, please. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. I just want to encourage you at this time of year to hate the work of them that turn aside. I want you to despise the satanic oppression and the spiritual grooming that's happening through witchcraft in public. I want you to have a pure heart before the Lord and say, Lord, help me to hate that stuff and not be attracted to it. Help me to despise it and be right with you. Lord, it says here that we will be your people. And Lord, I want to be your son and your daughter. And I want to look like your son and your daughter. And I, I don't want to touch the unclean thing. And I want to come out from among them. I want to be separate. And He will receive you. He will bless you. I understand some of you may have a tradition of taking part in certain ways. And I know before I preach this sermon, this is a hard saying. This is not very popular. But most of the Bible isn't popular anyway. I don't say it to offend you or to be holier than thou. But if you're condoning their evil deeds by taking part in it, it's time for you to take a stand for the Lord and look like one of God's children and be separate and say, you know what, we don't do that anymore. Maybe we did and we were wrong because the Bible says that we shouldn't be participating in darkness and idolatry and Satanism and witchcraft and whoredoms and that's what it is. 
You know you can't go anywhere without somebody dressing up like a witch or a whore. Preserve your eyes. Separate yourself for God's glory. He'll reward you. He will bless you. You know, in 1 Corinthians 10, he says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. You can't go to hell's holy day for the glory of God. I just want to encourage you, take a stand. Tell somebody else to separate from Halloween. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you so much. And Lord, I thank you for your free gift of salvation. Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless this church with the opportunity to preach the truth and to comfort people. Lord, I pray that you would help use us to restore families and just to be a beacon of light and truth in this community. Lord, I pray that you would help us to represent you more and more and to love the lost. But Lord, we know that you want us to be a clean vessel. Lord, we know that you want to fill us with your Spirit and inhabit us and inhabit our speech. Lord, I pray that you would give a special blessing to those that came today that are willing to make a change. Lord, I ask that you would fill them with your Spirit and, and give them something good to say. Lord, I pray that you would help them represent you and be a witness for you as we leave for here. Lord, I love you and I need your help. Lord, I ask that you would help us to just honor you in everything we do at this church. We humbly ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.